Back in April, my wife Daria had come to me and asked if I could do her a favor. There is an annual math and science fair at the elementary school, and they wanted some way to inspire the kids there uh, to see if they were interested in joining or starting a Lego robotics club. And uh, so, given that we had a robot set, a Lego robot set, my wife had asked me if I could put together some kind of a robot to demonstrate at this math and science fair. I thought about uh, with different ideas, uh, but I asked my son, Gavin, and he came up with an idea about a robot that could draw. So I went uh, into the instructions and found a basic set with, uh, in, of instructions of how to build a, a robot with tire treads. And then added to that the ability to take a, a pen, and raise it, and lower it. Uh, and then I programmed it to, to draw uh, a few basic shapes. Uh, but then I thought it'd be neat if you could actually tell it how to draw the shapes, somehow give it a command in order to draw that. So onto that, we added uh, a color sensor that if you show up one of three colors, it would draw either a smile face a house or a star. And uh, then we took this to the, uh, to the math and science fair. And uh, we, we got there early and, and set it up and had a table off to the side uh, with a sign that was pointing to our way uh, off the main drag. I didn't really think that many people were going to come by since it was off to the side. But uh, just a few minutes after we set up, and mind you, this was 15 minutes early before the event even began, already there were kids coming up curious, what is this? What is this robot? And, uh, and so we showed them. We, we set it down and we'd uh, have them choose a color. They would show it to the sensor and uh, I'd hit the go button and uh, off it would go. And the, the kids were delighted. They, they loved seeing the robot making these shapes. And they go and they tell their friends. Uh, in the meantime, I was asking the parents if they could sign the kids up. Uh, for uh, being interested in, in joining the Lego Robotics Club. And we were there a good two and a half hours solid, just drawing, drawing, drawing. An endless line of kids would come up. Um, and at the end, we had over 40 kids signing up for this event. It was amazing. Oh All right. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. So, after the Bath and Science Fair, I started looking ahead to this year's Brick Fair, the annual Lego festival that's held in Northern Virginia, and thought that Drawbot would be a great thing to display there. Uh, but there are some improvements that we'd like to make. The main improvement was the setup. What we had at the Science Fair is a sheet of paper that we would tape all four sides down in order to keep the robot from scuffling up the paper as it goes over the edges. If it trips over the edges, it messes up the whole drawing. So we had to figure out what we could make in order to keep that from happening. Um, it, it was it was so took so long to tape down each sheet of paper. So uh, I, I came up with the idea of uh, taking a roll of butcher paper, an endless stream of white paper, and uh, attaching that to a board somehow, and then having the paper go underneath a couple of wooden slats to keep it from going anywhere. Uh, so I, I built it out of some spare wood that we had and painted it all white and, uh, and then tried it out. And uh, it worked great. Um, the only tweak we had to do was to make sure that the robot didn't go off the edges as it drew. It still had the same problem, but it had a lot more room to draw. Plus, it was so much quicker just to peel off a piece of paper and rip it and then hand it over to a kid. Next thing we wanted to do is to add another drawing. We only had three at the science fair. So uh, the theme of this year's brick fair is fire. So we set about figuring out how to make this draw a flame. Um, and given its limited movement, I, I thought that was impossible. But in the end, we came up with something that looked pretty much like a flame or a Christmas tree, depending on how you look at it. So now we're eager to see how this holds up for Brick Fair uh, coming up. It'll be two days and there'll be two sessions each day which will demonstrate this, one in the morning and one in the afternoon. So we'll see what the crowds are like there.
I'm looking forward to it. We arrived at Brick Fair two days before the public expo. After everyone set up their displays, including the stay and play area, we were ready for the crowds. Saturday morning, people had started lining up a couple hours before opening. Some brought folding chairs to make their weight more comfortable. Because of the fire theme, they arranged to have a couple fire trucks parked outside. That gave people something to look at while they waited in line. The doors opened and people began streaming in. The place was soon packed. All in all, 20,000 people came through over the weekend. A new record for Rick Fair. Eventually, people found their way over to the table where Drawbot was set up. Kids of all ages came by and got their drawings. It was interesting to hear from families who had their own Mindstorm sets. The kids had said they didn't know that their robots could draw. I demonstrated Drawbot during two sessions each day. When it was time to stop, because the battery needed charging, some people were upset but I told them to come back later. I ended up handing out over 100 drawings and I used up over half of the roll of paper. On Saturday, a reporter from the local ABC news station stopped by to take pictures of Drawbot. He asked me a few questions about myself. He then posted the pictures on the WJLA website on Monday, along with several other shots he took of Brick Fair. There were also a number of robotic competitions happening that weekend, but not enough people to compete. Ian Warfield, the head of the competitions, asked me if I could have Drawbot participate in the sumo wrestling match. I agreed and put Drawbot in the ring without the marker, and I gave him a new name, Deathbot. I had to draw a circle while the other robot just shoved it out of the ring. Not a very competitive match. On the second day, I wrote a quick program to turn to the side and push ahead while staying in the ring, using the color sensor. I added a few decorations and named it Deathbot 2, then put it in the ring. It survived a little longer, but it's still lost. Sometimes, it just charged out of the ring without coming back. The last competition was to build a robot that could gather as many little balls as it could in 90 seconds. There were no other participants, so we just had to capture at least one ball to win. In just 30 minutes, I wrote a program to do that, while the kids outfitted a trap in place of the pen. We renamed it Catchbot and put it to the test. It wasn't very impressive, but it won. Overall, Brick Fair was a blast. It was fun to get Drawbot out in the larger public, but it was even better to inspire kids to build their own robots. I'm looking forward to seeing what next year brings. Maybe some kid will create a robot that does amazing things and inspires others to create.